Hey YouTubers, let's talk about lifts. This is my lift. Just had it installed. It's a two post lift, obviously. It's 11,000 pounds. It's from an outfit in Nixon, Missouri, though I think there's a couple of warehouses in other places. There's their website. Come up there. Uh, this is my journey. Now, originally, if, for those of you who have been watching the videos on my shop, which I still have one video left to post, the completion of the shop. I'm working on that. So, I mentioned that I, I'm just done getting on the ground. That's the main reason for building the shop. You build the shop so you can put a lift in it so you can quit crawling underneath the vehicle and only to get up again because you got the wrong socket or don't have a wrench or whatever. You know how it goes. So uh, when I built the shop, I said I'm going to put a four post lift in there. I never even considered a two post lift, just didn't want it. So I started looking for uh, four post lifts. And when it comes to four post lifts, some of the things you got to take into consideration, which were the things that weighed on me enough that I ended up changing my mind and going to a two post lift are that, do you want to open front or do you not? You know, some of the four post lifts, so you can get a four post lift that doesn't have the beam going across the front. So you can just walk underneath the vehicle without having to duck if you're approaching from the front. You pay extra money for that. And for me, it was a must-have. Uh, I wanted the thing to be convenient. Then I start thinking about, you know, like I, I drive a Dodge one-ton Dewey. Well, I have a Jeep too. Sometimes I drive it. I have an old Ford pickup. I drive it. I drive all kinds of stuff. And your change. Say you got your Dodge. You got to change ball joints on it because that's what they like. Dodges, they don't like healthy ball joints. They like to destroy ball joints uh, thanks to AAM and their shitty design. But anyway, uh, you know, you got to have your tr your rolling jacks in there. Uh, you got to get the thing in the air. Now you're all set up. No big deal. Uh, and you're starting to work on changing ball joints. But the runway that the vehicle drives up on is kind of in the way you know I'm thinking like that now that's okay I mean it's doable but at the end of the day I wanted it to be convenient I don't want these complications and uh, frustrations and whatnot uh, so I went with a two post lift now you know, on the upside, you, if you got a four post lift, I mean, you, you, you got a place to set your tools, right? <laughs> you just set them right there on the runway where you're working. Uh, you don't have that with this kind of lift, but you can get a service card or something. I mean, there's ways around it. You know, at the end of the day, the only real inconvenience of the two post lift, in, in my opinion, uh, is that you got to get down on the ground and put the arms in place so that you can lift the vehicle but like i was telling my buddy chris you know how, how lazy can you be and still have respect for yourself you know you know all able-bodied people can at least pull that off so that's how i looked at it uh the four post lift takes up more room you know uh you're not going to have it right at the edge of the door. You want it in front of the door by, you know, say 18 inches or something like that. You know, d different different for different people, but that was kind of my thing. I wanted to be a couple feet away from the door. So now 20 feet of your shop is just gobbled up by a lift. And so with a two-post lift, you, you kind of avoid that. Um... So that, that's really how I got there. Now, I haven't got to use the lift yet because 
the power company still hasn't come out and put power to my building yet still waiting on that so I ain't got no power um, the electrician's still doing some stuff and then uh, and then I'm gonna have it spray foam but anyway that's a shop video not a lift video so this particular lift is 220 volts uh, on the data plate on the side of the lift says 20 amps so i mean that that would be your breaker the actual current draw based on the data plate that's on the motors uh, i think up to 16 amps i think i took a picture of it and it's in the video but you know that's what you're looking at it's a no-name lift uh i could care less you know i'm not i don't have Angry Beards Automotive out here, and I'm not hooking cars through here, you know, all day long making a living, so I really don't care. It's plenty sturdy enough. You got two inverted cylinders. You're lifting with the cylinders, not no cables or chains or pulleys. Uh, it, you know, it locks out. It's bolted to the floor. I got six inches of high-density concrete there, at over 3,500 PSI. So, uh, I don't foresee any issues. The heaviest thing in a lift is my one ton, which with a 100 gallon fuel tank and a fifth wheel hitch, it might, you know, it might hit 10,000 pounds. Uh, it's about it's 11,000 pound lift, uh, you know, as well as I do, it'd probably lift 15,000 pounds. So, I don't really care. I don't worry about it. I didn't want to be at the limit, though. I mean, safety does factor into it for me. If the truck weighed 9,000 pounds, I didn't want a 9,000-pound lift. I wanted something more. And so I got something more, 11,000. So uh, it was $3,500 installed. That's what I paid for it. I called him one day, said he'd be out the next day. Next day came. They had some issues, so they didn't make it out that day. It was the next morning that they made it out. I'm fine with it. They did leave me their trash. I guess it's my trash, technically, honestly. It's what the lift was wrapped in. It's not a big deal. I paid for it. I'll carry it out back and burn it. Uh, so if you're worried about who's going to take the trash away it's going to be your problem anyway that's the lift completed ready for power bye